All right, YouTube, after a very long day of uh, constantly grinding for experience on RuneScape, it's time for a video at long last. And of course, tomorrow the setup will be slightly the same. I'll probably do a morning video salute, though. I've gotten like 90% of the stuff I wanted to do accomplished already in a single day. It was, uh, it was a madhouse, a lot of lag. Uh, but it's time to talk about Trump's press conference there, his attack upon the media and so forth, which has a lot of people worried. They're like, oh, this is a dystopian. It's 1984. What did Trump actually talk about, though, at the press conference when he was referencing specifically uh, the media, the press uh, that was gathered around him? What do those people actually represent? Do they represent the actual press itself or simply a proportion of the press? A proportion of groups associated with doing the activities of the press. When people speak of the press, they often conflate it with the media. They're two totally different things. They're, they're essentially, they're thinking of corporate, like the nightly news, TV news, and, and the sites and so forth, and affiliates associated with them. Uh, a segment of, you could say, movie making, and documentary filmmaking, uh, and, and journalism in the corporate sense. The problem is journalism in the corporate sense is completely dead at this point. It doesn't even exist anymore, just barely. So that's not even, that's just an afterthought. When you're thinking, though, of the TV sort of news, or news print, or radio news, talk radio, NPR, something like that, what you're talking about are businesses. You're talking about for-profit corporations and so-called non-profit uh, sort of groups, bureaucratic groups like NPR that nonetheless are completely biased. Technically, they're violating all sorts of laws all the time, all sorts of regulations from the FCC, but they can get away with murder because the government co-ops them, so they just play nice with the politicians. That is a small proportion of the press. It's a small proportion of the activities of the press as well. If a person has published a book, they have engaged in the activities of the press. It's explicitly protected in full by the First Amendment. If a person is publishing a blog, they're engaged in activities of the press, same protections apply. If they're making informative videos online or just entertainment online, they're engaged in activities of the press. Anything which transfers information from one person to the other and is not physical speech from person to person direct uh, in, in physical proximity is an activity of the press. Free speech? As in, in person, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to a group of people, and the press, I'm not directly talking to you, I'm handing you a billet, I'm handing you a manuscript, I've put a book online, I'm publishing a blog or something like that, I'm conducting citizen journalism, I'm recording something with, with a mobile device. Those are all activities of the press. Trump is not attacking the First Amendment when he calls these people out. He's attacking corporate groups which should be conducting journalism, they should be attempting to bring people information. They've, they've made their fortune for decades and decades by telling people, we're bringing you the news, we're telling you what is going on. They've stopped doing that, largely. If you tune into the Weather Channel, yeah, you're getting news. You're, you're seeing what the weather is, what disasters are happening right now. Is there a flash flood warning? Is there a blizzard warning? What's the temperature going to be three days from now? Let's go to our meteorologist for more, something like that. Other than that, you're not getting news. You're getting primarily analysis. Any Tom, Dick, or Harry can supply analysis. Then it all boils down to how accurate and how sensible is the analysis. Is it sane? What's the bias, if any? And the corporate media is far more biased than almost any other group that can engage in the activities of the press to begin with. They're biased specifically because, number one, they're entirely profit-driven. They're businesses. They can go bankrupt if they don't. So they're going to slap a hell of a lot of entertainment in with any analysis they did, that they do. That's why they have the flashing lights and random, random jumps to someone who's not in a conversation and uh, all the, all the weird-ass stories that they talk about. They would make mountains out of molehills. They turn mountains into molehills if you pay them enough to do so, and so forth. The true free press are people who are not bought and sold in that manner. People who largely are operating in an online-only fashion or a local fashion, some, some regional group, some organization or something like that. The corporate press is not engaged at this point in many ways with the activities of the press. 
All of their rabble-rousing is protected speech. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind about that whatsoever. No matter how bad it may be, no matter how biased it may be, no matter how outright much of a lie it may be, it's still protected. But they're proclaiming themselves to bring you unbiased, factual accounts of what's happening, and they're not living up to that expectation. That's why they're losing out. And those are the people that Trump is, is attacking here. He's attacking the people cloistered in the room there with, you know, $50,000 camera setups that go out to their quarter million dollar news van and back to their $10 million studio where the CEO, who's worth a couple hundred million dollars, gives them marching orders, often at the behest of international groups that have nothing to do with national sovereignty here. They have nothing to do with any specific loyalty to the United States. I'm not talking about foreign press, I'm talking about supposedly domestic press whose shareholders, they might be a bunch of Saudis or Pakistani royals or something like that. Or they might have ties to Europe, to the European Union, or to, or to Russia. And look at Russia today or something like that. It's the same exact thing. And, P and they don't analyze things accurately. We saw this in the last election on full display for the whole world to laugh at. They weren't laughing for very long, now were they? We've seen it in other countries too. We saw this in the UK. Even from over here on this side of the pond, it was fairly obvious something wasn't quite syncing up between the tale that was being told by their media there, their corporate government co-opted in, in Europe, of course, media there, and the reality on the ground. They seemed to be totally, totally different things. And they were, and they were wrong. And everything that they say practically at this point is wrong. You look through, <clears throat> you look at the feeds of any of these corporate news sites, that they've started putting online out of sheer desperation to try to compete with other people who can do it more efficiently to try to to dumb them down a little bit you look at you look at their feeds you look at the sort of things that they post ancillary to the stuff that they put on the tv and so forth um, associated with it and it's lie after lie very very little of it is actually true and what passes as truth is usually a half truth at best or it's a little kernel of truth that then gets analyzed, run into the ground by a bunch of bias and spin. That's what you see from it, from CNN, MSNBC, NBC, all of these other groups. In, in all fairness, groups like Fox as well. You even see it from Breitbart and some of these others. They spin everything that they get a hold of to try to prop up a religious point of view, a social point of view, a political point of view, and to get money. That's all that they're in it for, primarily their purpose is to prop up their business and give kickbacks to their CEO and their shareholders and things of that nature. And those are the people being attacked here. I, I, it's not an attack upon the press. It's an attack upon a bunch of corporations that happen to be engaged in activities associated with the concept of a press, the distribution of information. But attacking them because that information is false, that's a perfectly valid criticism. If somebody says something that's not true, they have every right to say it. And others, even in a government capacity, have every right to point out that it is wrong. And it's happened before. It's not like this is the first time this has happened in our history. Every president has had people go after them and call them out if they're being unfair. Then on the other side, you also have muckraking, in which actual journalism is going on, which I see very, very little of at the moment, in which people are actually trying to go after somebody who, who, who is uh, corrupt, and bring them down but I don't see that happening I see them essentially taking shit throwing it at the wall and hoping that it sticks and uh, yeah yeah there there's your so-called press it's just the corporate media these groups don't represent life on the ground for the average American the people that are reporting there are all rich the people who own these companies are all rich they live in their na their gated communities and take private jets everywhere they go that's all well and good no more power to them for having succeeded financially. But they are not necessarily a group of people uh, that you would conglomerate together having randomly chosen average Americans, let's face it. They, they don't know anything about life on the ground for the average American. This is why they were so dismayed at the election result. This is why they couldn't fathom what had happened. These people in their gated communities where they've always been told from day one there's no difference uh, between these groups of people and and life in the ghetto is just fine here glorify it with a rap song or something like that and by the way we're going to use wedge issues and 
uh, these groups, the, these Hispanics have to hate Trump or there's something wrong with them, and black people have to hate Trump, and, and anyone who believes in women's rights has to hate Trump, and they couldn't wrap their minds around the fact that these groups that they've coddled and catered towards and used for political leverage that the politicians have in association with that corporate media could possibly turn their back upon their globalized ideology after realizing globalism is negatively impacting them too. And that's what this ultimately boils down to. It's a farce. Corporate media doesn't speak for me. It doesn't speak for probably any of you. If you're very, very wealthy, if there are any millionaires watching this right now, good on you, you've succeeded financially. You're closer to where maybe someone like Bill O'Reilly or Rachel Maddow is financially. But you have to understand that affects the way in which you view reality. When If you had a sampling of people that included some average Joes, like you'd get on YouTube, like you get on blogs and things like that, where the actual journalism happens, then that wouldn't be a problem anymore in the corporate media. They'd still probably get muzzled, but it would, it would improve the content quality. But they're never going to do that because they, they want to outcompete one another for people essentially. Look at what at who they hire. Typically people who have the hair plug and the cap teeth or the big, you know, you know, the double D artificial boobs and wear low cut dresses and stuff, especially at Fox in all, again in all honesty. But it happens throughout all of these groups. What do you think RT does when it drags these people who are essentially supermodels up to uh, report on what's happening in the world? Do you think that's an accident? Oh, yeah, they, they were top of their class, every single one of them. All of these attractive young ladies, they were all top of their class. We chose them for their intellect. We didn't choose them for any other more obvious physical qualities that they may have. Are you kidding me? You think that that's not one of the strategies they use? They use it in advertising all the time. Why wouldn't they use it on the news? You sit there and you zone out and you watch Bill or you watch Rachel Maddow or any of these people talking. You're zoned out like a zombie. You're just looking at the screen numbly. That's why I don't watch TV unless I have no other choice. If there's something breaking and you can tell there's some real shit going on, I might glance over and I'll watch documentaries or like paranormal shows occasionally and that's the limit of it. I think, uh, when's the last time I sat down and watched even like a quarter episode of anything? Probably over a year ago, honestly. It's what disdain I have for it. I don't want to sit there and be all glazed. I'd rather watch something that some regular person has created online. And by the way, I don't really have to worry about, oh, I'm going to buy this cable package. I'm going to pay-per-view this program. And this one, it's going to budget a $15 million, so it must be great. No, I want to watch something someone slapped together for 50 cents. And it's going to be better. It's more entertaining. I'll sit here for hours and do that. I'm going to watch their swill. Why the hell would I want to? <laughs> It'd be retarded. So yeah, when Trump attacks these people, more power to him. He's attacking people who are putting out hit pieces. It's just like the Pootie Pie crap. They put out a bunch of nonsense about him. He calls them out. They put out a whole new slew of nonsense that misrepresents what he said in his response to their crap in the first place. I, I can understand, I think, how Trump feels. They uh, put my thing on Gizmodo there. And they uh, misquoted everything that I fucking said. Yeah, it's the same basic principle. It's just nobody at this point yet has bothered to write up a full-length hit piece against me. Probably BuzzFeed or, or one of these groups eventually will, let's just face it. They'll put it up there and they'll claim, oh, you know, he did something 10 years ago that proves he's a he's Hitler or something like that. I, I bet they will. In, in due time, as I gain more support, I'm sure that they will. It'll be funny. It'll be more amusing than a problem because it's just going to drive more people to me anyway. Because they're, they're too stupid to realize that's what happens. It's like, do you even use the internet? They have to pay people half their age to post on their Twitter feeds and stuff like that. They don't know how to use the internet. Half, half of these people, they're so, they're so whacked out. I mean, probably snorting coke all day. After all, most of them, they're in like Manhattan or LA or something like that. What do you fucking think they're doing all day? What do you think they've got in their desks? You know, I think there's some little white bricks down there, and I think it's a don't ask, don't tell policy all over again, honestly. Uh, that would uh, certainly explain the general lack of intelligence on corporate media programming. I think it's probably about the same in Hollywood in general in the entertainment industry at large. That's about all. Peace out.